You guys ready? Yep. I think so. Welcome to Uncut Angling. I'm Aaron Weeb. Today, I am on the shore of the Red River here in Selkirk Park. We're about to go do some fishing, but first I got to introduce you to some special guests today. You have all met my sister, Carrie. She's been on a couple shows, and you have never met my brother, Johnny Holiday. He is standing right there right now. Hey, guys. And this is Rob Nash. What's up? The two of them are in a band together, a real rock band. We're going to unpack that a little bit while we're fishing, but first, I'm going to get Rob to tell us his fishing experience. Obviously, my own brother has caught fish and seen a few things I, over the years. I oh. actually taught you how to fish. Yes, this is my mentor. Taught me everything I know, but Rob, what about you? I've been taking fishing seven times. Each time, I tell people I've never even seen someone catch a fish. I think it's all a farce. Well, we'll see if we can break that myth today for Rob. We're going to start small with some gold eye and then maybe move up from there if he's up for the challenge. Not going to happen. Let's do it. <laughs> this is Donovan Pierce, owner of Blackwater Cats. He is hooked up right now, so we're gonna get a little peek. Does this count as seeing a fish caught? Or is it in another boat? So it's like <laughs> watching on TV. I have no idea if you set this up earlier. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the famous Lockport. This is the epicenter of channel catfishing in North America. Obviously Selkirk's really good too, but like right at the dam is where there's so much historic catfishing going on. At this time of year, there's less right at the dam. They kind of start to move more downstream, but we've come up here to do some goldeye fishing. I don't know what I'm doing with anything, but if you need just a hand for something, let me know. Here, can you hold Marcel's drink? Yep. Thanks. Gatorade, sponsor. It's tough to see the current seams because the wind's blowing against the current, but here you can see that the current is going to deflect off that point right there. And that's what we're fishing is where the current actually changes. You guys were wondering if we brought rads. Mm -hmm. Is that the uh, XL7? Here's our bait of choice. Worms. Say I've got worms. He's got worms. No, say I've got worms. <laughs> that's a slip bobber on there. <laughs> Rob has no expectations of catching a fish right now. You feel like you're just doing the thing. Yeah, we're fishing. I've done this before. This is as successful as I've seen fishing. Oh, got one. No, oh, he's winning. Someone needs to get the net. Uh, the net? Rob, that's you. Yep. Pass the rod to Johnny. Here, Johnny. Yep, lift it straight up. Yep, this is the moment. Rob, this is the moment. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, oh no. So <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Did you see that one get caught? I saw it get caught. I didn't see if you had one on your line when you put it in, though. <laughs> that is catfish candy. I had to catch it for these guys, but they might get the next one. We're going to try just a little bit longer to see if we can get a couple. I don't know. I had the net, so who really caught it? Just saying. Biggest fish I've ever seen, right there. Second biggest, you saw that one this morning. No, he thought that was a hologram that we just pulled up beside. <laughs> I wouldn't cut that one up though. Why? We might mount it, if that's the only one we catch today. <laughs> well, what's the camera guy doing here? I said pack light. What does that say, 95 chocolate bars? Do you like Mars bars? Yeah. Who likes Mars bars? Yeah, they're not a great. Whoa! Like, with, whoa! I was so, way too aggressive. You got bit right there? Yeah. I got so excited. <laughs> oh, it happened again. Are you kidding me, John? <laughs> or maybe it's still on there. <laughs> it is still on there. Flip it in. <laughs> I got it in. Flip it in. Get it in. Get it in. I got this good, Marcel. It's been there the whole time. Pull it into the boat so he gets up. <laughs> this is that fish that you gave a jerk to. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I had to set that hook. <laughs> I have never seen a gold eye that small. Uh, we got the gold eye. Now we're going to check out the channel catfish holes. How was that? That was good. Uh, <laughs> take 12. <laughs> Look at these beauties. Real juice gummy bears. And this is what's crazy. I opened them and you'd think it'd be all gummy bears. There's a gummy worm mixed in with the gummy bears. Talk about poor quality control. That's a legit worm. Mmm. You chew it? it? It all tastes the same whether it's a gummy bear, gummy worm. So good. You want it? No. Sure? No. Yes, I mean. Do you want one? Yes, I'm sure. No, I don't want one. Okay. Mm. Oh. Hey, what do you guys think of this spot for catfish? 
Top three for me usually. I've seen better. Take this in one hand and then take the chain in the other one. Do I have to show the brand name? Mm, you could, Cattails, nice. Just how far out? Uh, as far as you can. Oh wow, that was good. Don't patronize me. Whew. So there's nothing really below us right now. This is right now, this is history. So if I drag back in history, right there, see the separation off bottom? That's a fish, for sure. You wanna look over once in a while and see some fish or it feels hopeless. Rob has witnessed three fish caught and Rob has nothing, still. Still, we went to this hot gold eye place, nothing. Okay, let me retrieve one of those fish and we will cut it up for bait. Okay. John, you wanna hold them? Nope. You gonna hold the cutting board? Uh... You have to kill it as quickly and humanely as you can. Right. Would one of you guys like to do that? No, thanks. Okay, so I'll just quickly kill them. And this is the fastest way to kill them. Bite his head off and then, did you see him suffer? No. Nope. No, that's a perfect size bait <laughs> piece right there. <laughs> and one of you can certainly kill the next one. Yeah, yeah, I left my uh, fish biting teeth at home, but thank you. You guys have any other questions about that process? You got some, uh, some... In my gap? Sometimes I get a piece of gold I stuck in my gap. There's some... There's that. Is it scales? What is it, Rob? I'm not sure. Look at the way the gill cover, the curve of the gill cover matches the curve of the inside of your teeth. So it's pretty much the only thing that you can get on there because a knife would cut that, you know, you can't get a good... That was the only option, I see. Is that a technium? Yeah. Press the button, other hand goes on the butt of the rod for control. Right here, nice and gradual, it doesn't need to be far away. Actually, that's perfect. Because we're on a drop off here, if you go too far away, you leave the drop off. We're right over top of the fish right here. Okay, and you can throw that in the rod holder. John, the one on the right, get that one in your hands. Push it straight out, but don't pull on the rod tip yet. Ideally, he's ticking with it, John, and you're bowing to him. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Bow to him and then punk. Yeah, that was a bite. Bow to him, bow to him just a little bit, John, and then hammer him. Is he still eating it? Yeah, bow, 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 bow. Slab him, slab him! You got one. Rob, are you seeing this? You're gonna net this, Rob. Yeah, but I'm not, go, go get the net. Don't I watch my things though? How's it going? Good. Feel heavy? Is it heavy, John, or no? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Heavier than the last one. <laughs> what are you going to do, Rob? Okay. Nice job. Did you get him? Nope. Is he in the net? Nope. Okay, don't reel anymore, John. Just, oh, get that one, Rob. Did you get him? Oh, it's a hog! It's a hog! <laughs> Look at that beefcake! What's well, not light? You don't want to hold it, probably. Well, are you okay I feel like it? I have to. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, like this, um, up the back. Where? No, no, same spot, but just up the back. Yeah, yeah, for support, oh. like this. There you go, get him right out. Look at that, that's a beefcake. Tell Rob how hard that thing pulled. It pulled really hard, Rob. <laughs> you should try it sometime. I, I hope to. Oh, yeah. What would that weigh? It's a beast. John, how much is that, 100 pounds? I'd say 110. 110? What's the Master Angler? The Master Angler is 34. He is? Oh, I don't know. 34. That's a big, wide one. It's legit. My hands are clean, don't worry. Rub. <laughs> Love it. Rob Nash still is a career zero for fish caught. Luckily, he's not a fisherman though. Rob Nash, Johnny Holiday together make up the Rob Nash Project, which is a band that does much more than just perform music. Fishing didn't work out for me, so I decided to try to play music and it all stemmed from uh, me wanting to share my story. When I was 17, I was in a car accident actually found dead on arrival, no pulse, not breathing. Obviously came back to life, but I didn't wake up enlightened one to change the world. I was bitter and angry. I didn't want to be alive because of everything that happened to me. And for about two years, I was suicidal, did a lot of stupid things and I kept it all inside. Didn't talk to anybody about it. I made it through that dark time. And then one day I realized I wanted to tell my story so others wouldn't have to die like I did before they started to live. And so I started playing music, got a record deal after a few albums, had a few top 10 hits on the radio. And then a few years ago, got a opportunity to do almost like a Johnny Cash tour through like prisons and youth detention centers, reserves and schools telling my story. And I ripped up my record deal to do the tour and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. And that tour has been growing ever since. One day we got a call from a school in Ontario and they said they had lost a student to suicide. On her suicide note, it revealed that she had a deal with one of her friends, like a, a pact. If you kill yourself, I'll kill myself. And they said, we don't know who it is. So they asked us to come do a show. And that was a bizarre show for us to do because there was we knew somebody sitting 
right in front of us was about to take their life and we didn't know who it was. And for the first time I spoke directly about suicide and how I had been affected with my own thoughts. And a young girl came up to us after that show and she pulled out a note out of her pocket, handed it to us, and it was, it was her suicide note. She was planning to take her life that weekend. We try to make sure at every show we just assume somebody sitting in front of us is having those thoughts and it never fails. We've had actually 807 students have actually handed us suicide notes after the shows that we do. How many? 807. 807. Yeah, and that's not including the amount of kids that have their suicide notes on their phones and we delete them after the shows or kids get home and send us pictures on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, that's uh, a fish, Rob. That's a fish. See if you slide it straight out and then hooks yeah. that up, up. Yeah. Oh, just keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Yeah. Get your right hand further up on the rod. Okay. Yeah. And you got him. Is it heavy, Rob, or no? Eh, not that heavy. Nope. No, nope, no problem. No, not a Johnny fish, I don't think. What about now? I can't see it at all yet. I'm over here. Ooh. Whoa, what? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Never mind. That's a big fatty. I think it was my voice that it finally attracted. I should have started talking sooner. Ooh. Probably the best way to hold him is see the wrist of his tail here. Yeah. If I were to grab your wrist, see how if I go this way, I don't really have any grip, but if I go this way, yeah. see how I grab that cartilage? You grab top to bottom to get a bit of a grip on it, and then your thumb's gonna go up the back of them. Okay, okay. Like straight up the back. Yeah. Okay, and then you can get them out off your body a little bit. Yeah. Okay, what you're witnessing is a grown man's first fish ever. After eight <laughs> fishing trips, not yep. with me, I'm not gonna take the hit for that, but eight lifetime fishing <laughs> trips. I'm gonna take them from you and get a measurement for Technically, you. Technically, that's the smallest fish I've ever caught. <laughs> Got it? Got a shot of that? Okay. 34 inch Manitou Master Angler. Congratulations, sir. Setting the bar high now. You've never not caught a Master Angler. Yeah. Since you saw us last, Rob has added all this slime from his first fish ever. Yep. I think back to some of the groups back in the day, we'd sometimes have group meetups on a lake or something, but specific instances of this, let's say there was 20 or 25 guys, and two of those 20 are now gone from suicide. Right. So it's like, whoa, that percentage is pretty crazy. In 10 years, two of us are going to be gone. Well, then what? In 20 years, another two are going to be gone? Like, it's just a really weird, unsettling stat. A new report released by Kids Help Phone revealed that one in five teens in Canada has seriously considered suicide in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months? That's not even like in their lifetime. Can it actually be that high? For sure, yeah. Which we probably would have argued before we did this tour. Now you see how common yeah, it is. After talking to hundreds of thousands of students and seeing the amount that break down during certain songs and, and the fact that these kids that we're talking to have suicide notes with them. They fold it up, put it in their purse, put it in their wallet, and they carry it with them. And it's, they can tell that it was written or it's got the date on it from two to three months prior. Meaning there's been lots of time. Yeah, well, they're holding it with them because they have those thoughts and they're waiting for somebody to push them over the edge or for somebody to reach out and say it's going to be okay. Yeah. So that's why we put such a focus on it during our shows. Something as simple as showing grace and love to everybody you deal with because you don't know what burdens they're carrying with. They're dealing with dark demons and you should just, I mean, that sounds so simple, show love to everyone. But beyond that, how are you gonna know? Because guys, for example, don't talk with other guys about what's going on. I could go fishing with someone a zillion times and then all of a sudden find out something terrible's happened years later and you would have never even suspected it. I think you can overthink what helping a person really entails. Like I think it's a lot simpler than what, uh, what we think it has to be. I mean, sometimes obviously a person needs professional help, but I think a lot of times someone just needs to know that someone else cares about them. And I think sometimes the smallest thing can turn around someone's day if they're in that, uh, that headspace. It's amazing what happens when you find out you're not alone and one person starts speaking. Like that's all we do is we get on stage and tell some stories and play some songs. Mm -hmm. And those stories, somebody relates to every story in the show. It's even this kind of stuff right now. Just, you know, we're just a bunch of guys out fishing right now and we're talking about some of these things. And, and I think right there, that's gonna give people the opportunity to open up about their own struggles if you're vulnerable first. So I think, yeah, leading by example can be a really huge thing. When people talk about mental illness and you know, addiction, they only talk about the suicides, they only talk about the overdoses, but we show videos of kids ripping up their notes and, and people see, okay, that's not everyone ends this with taking their life. Like even last year, I took all the, the signatures from the suicide notes that we've been given and I tattooed their signatures on my arm because it usually does feel so dark. Like what's the hope in this? And I want to be able to show people, I know you feel alone, but look, these are people that had those thoughts too and they're still here and they're conquering the world around them. And when people see these stories of hope, then it's like, oh, okay, 
there's another way out of this, this darkness. Like, yes, I had those thoughts once too, but look at me, I'm on this tour, I'm performing in front of you guys. We have our stories and you've got yours and somebody out there needs your story. And when you put your focus on, hey, maybe my story could help somebody else one day, that's, what, that's the hope in these stories. And we challenge the media all the time too. It's like, hey, tell a story about somebody that got off the train tracks once in a while. Tell a story about somebody that ripped up their suicide note and they're still here. Because there's tons of stories of hope out there. That's awesome. Uh, oh, oh. Now that's a commitment strike, we'll call it. Ooh, this looks like a big one. It's a big one? Yeah. No pressure, Rob. <sighs> cool. Get her over here a little. Nice and gentle. Lift it gentle. Rob, get the net out of the way. Get the net out of the way, Rob. Oh, you can't oh. see where the fish is yet, so don't Man, guess. it's crazy how they just go for that gut stone. This is going to be just like a gold eye. I'm going to laugh. Nice and gentle. Nice and smooth lift up now, John. Okay, Rob, slip it under him. You got him, Rob. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, big head. Woo. That might be the longest. I think so. Look at that pig. Rob Nash Project rocking the Red River. You're the only friend.